Hi, this is Jay Beal. I'm going to show you a fun Kubernetes attack path today. It's freezing here at the North Pole, even inside Jack Frost's casino. So let's take our mind off it and hack Jack Frost's Kubernetes cluster. Okay, here's the story. Jack Frost is cheating the casino players using a Kubernetes cluster to coordinate the games in the casino. It's querying his vendor's Casino Monitor 1225, which tracks the player's winnings against their uh, initial chip purchase. If they're up by 50%, the cluster directs all the casino games to cheat the player, skewing the odds until the player is below 50% again. So uh, this doesn't sound very uh, this doesn't sound very good. So let's see if we can set things right. We're going to get right into a demo. So here we go. So we've got Jack Frost's Kubernetes cluster. We've got a um, just one port it's listening on. And on that one port, we find a web server. So let's try an old pen test trick and hit robots.txt. See that it says, please don't hit contractors.php. And we'll go hit contractors.php. And when we look at this, it basically says, hey, we're some wronged contractors who got stiffed by Jack Frost. He's frozen out too many of us. Um, the contractors built the computer systems. So let's see if we can stop Jack Frost from cheating the casino patrons the way he cheated us. So we're just going to check and see if this thing just lets us run commands. So we type ID. Yep, this is a web shell. So we're going to turn around and, and uh, make this pull down a interpreter binary from our uh, Kali Linux's web server. And that's going to get us some interpreter session running right in that first pod, in the contractor's pod. And we set up a quick little shell. I'm going to do one more thing with the web shell first, though. I'm going to run env for environment. And that's going to give us a bunch of services. Now, Kubernetes services are kind of load balancers. They can be external, like that contractor's one was, or they can be internal. Um, so if we're looking at the environment variables, anything that was uh, any of the services um, that are, you know, that are in the same namespace as our pod are going to have the services listed, um, listed out as environment variables with IP addresses even. So we find the interesting one here is the SKU level um, service host, the SKU level service. And here's its IP address and it's on port 80. So let's go and uh, take that IP address and curl it. So we'll curl that IP address from our contractors pod and uh, we see a whole bunch of, we see a JSON object and it's a bunch of players. And we have a player, Kate Libby, whose win rate is 90%. And uh, and so the, the casino is going to skew things against her by 10%. And you see a bunch of the other uh, a bunch of the other players here. So this is what we're trying to break. We're trying to break the casino cheating. So we're going to upload a copy of Kube Control and uh, go back to our shell in that pod. And what we're going to do is find that if we look in that pod, there's an auto mounted service count token in var run secrets Kubernetes IO. And so you'll see if you look in one of these service count directories, I'm just going to set a, a variable um, to that service count directory. If we look in that service count directory, we'll see a certificate authority cert, a namespace, and a token. That token's a JWT, a service count token um, for, um, for this pod's service count. So if we look at the namespace, we see we're in the default namespace. And... Um, what we can do is just set up a kube control command that's going to have all of the values we need. The certificate authority path will be among them. So we'll set up an alias for kube control that says use the token, use that JWT we saw, use the certificate authority path we just found, um, use the, uh, and for server, just the traditional um, uh, DNS name, core DNS name that's going to get us um, to what we need. So we'll make kube control executable. And we'll run kube control version, see that we've got a cluster version that's not out of date. Um, uh, we'll do get pods, and we'll see that in this namespace, we've got that contractors pod that we're already in. And we've got a SKU level pod, which is where that service is actually pointing. Um, so let's go and say kube control describe pod SKU level and see what we learn about it. We find a specific image. Um, this is going to be a public bust a cube. Um, Holiday Hack Challenge 2021 SKU level pod image, um, a SKU level container image. Um, it gets 
passed in a couple environment variables. One of them is called monitor, and that monitor is that casino monitor dot uh, pitmme.com uh, that's for a uh, person in the middle me um, and then redis password um, but redis password we can't see the contents because the contents of redis password are in a secret called redis pa uh, called redis pwd so we can try and get that secret we try listing secrets and we're not allowed to list it i'll tell you that if we tried to get that secret we aren't allowed to do that either so we're going to turn around and try something else we're going to go and pull a copy of that container image and um, because it was public, we we're able to just pull it straight to our own Kali system. And now we'll run a container based on the image so we can kind of explore its file system. And the cool thing is we're going to do something a little bit better than just exploring its, its uh, file system, you know, in the running container. Turns out that um, we're going to take that, um, that container, find secrets, and we'll run Docker inspect. And this is going to show us that this container image is actually built up from a bunch of layers. And each of the layers is basically a diff um, and introduces some, you know, introduces some file changes. And they're all mounted, they're union mounted together in an overlay file system. And it's, it's pretty cool. Um, what that means is similar to Git, nothing's truly ever gone. Um, in here, if you make a change in the file system and then you, you know, and then you make it, you know, and you publish that container image, and then from that container image, you make another change, um, they're all, all the changes you ever made are there, even if they overwrite each other. Um, and by there, I mean, we, we get them all when we pull down that container image, and you're going to see that now. So if we, you know, this is everything between the colons are these different images, and you see from that those diff directories. So let's go and take a look at the things that were named in there. Let's take one layer of that image and we see it's got a diff directory and that diff directory has Redis password and this is just deleting the Redis password that was in the image prior to this. So let's look at an earlier point in the image and look at its diff. And there we see there's a Redis password in it and we can cat that Redis password out. So we've got this password that wouldn't show up in the image if you just pull it and look at it, but if you go and look at the layers, you find it, and um, Bob's your uncle. So, let's go and play with this. The next thing I want to do is, now that we have this Redis password, I want to see if I can find a service. And so I'm going to upload an open source tool that uh, some of us at uh, uh, InGuardian started writing um, called Parades. And Parades got a cool little feature we just added recently. Um, so I've uploaded that Parades into the contractor's pod, and I'm just going to run this enumerate DNS. It's a recent feature, and what it does is it makes a single, simple, simple um, SRV um, DNS request for any.any.service.cluster.local, and that gets us a list of all the services and their IP addresses and their ports. Um, and... Uh, uh, so we'll, we see there's a con there's SKU level service and contractor service things we were expecting, but there's also Redis.control. That means the control means the control namespace. Um, so in the control namespace, which we didn't know about yet, that's a new namespace besides default or kube system. Um, there's Redis and there's also dashboard. So let's hit that dashboard first because it's on port 80 and that could be interesting. So we'll exit out of Parades. And we'll set up a port forward to port forward R8813 into port 80 on that service. And then we'll hit this in our browser and we'll see this dashboard's giving us the same information that API gave us. We see each of the users, Kate Libby's got a win rate of 90 and skew being applied to her. The casino's cheating against her by 10. So um, let's go and pull up this Redis CLI. Now it turns out that the dashboard and the Redis and the Redis server are both running in the same container. And um, let's just stipulate that we could that we figured that out and uh, and go make use of it. So we're using Redis CLI and hitting that Redis service by name. We're using the password we found. And now what we're going to do is tell Redis that it's um, that its database file is in var dub html and it's called shell.php. We're going to use that to create a reverse to create a, a web shell. So flush all will empty the database and then we'll set one key to some PHP. 
um, that runs uh, CMD, that runs whatever command is passed in on, on the get, um, on the get CMD parameter, just runs it. And this was in Holiday Hack Challenge last year in uh, one of the terminal games. Um, so we'll create this, uh, we'll create this key, we'll hit save and exit. And now that means that we've created this shell.php. So let's go and curl that dashboard on shell.php, pass in command equal to ID, and it worked. We've got a, we've got users. So we'll do minus S for silent mode. And now let's try a more complicated version. And this complicated version is just gonna run um, a meterpreter, it's gonna pull down and run a meterpreter binary, just like we did with, uh, with, the, uh, with the first um, web application we saw here. So let's go interact with that pod that we're in, with the one that's running Redis. And we'll just set up a terminal variable and, uh, and now we'll clear. And so if we take a look, we see a flag. We can go read the flag to get a hint. It says, hey, you could replace the, the, um, the skew amounts, the cheating amounts in the Redis database, but they'll get overwritten because the way this thing actually works is there's a skew level API and you know that was that thing we saw in the default namespace and it populates the skew amounts by checking the win rates with this API that isn't hosted in the cluster, the, that casino monitor one. And so it says, listen, if you can person in the middle this API, the casino monitor API, then you could break this. And so that's what we're gonna do because there's a cool CVE in Kubernetes um, that's kind of almost a feature. Um, there are workarounds being introduced, but this is just kind of a function. Um, and so it's not quickly, it wasn't quickly and easily patched when it was found last year. So um, let's first to, so that we can person in the middle of this, let's just interact with the API so we know what it's supposed to be sending out so that we can send out something that's similar. Um, so we do this curl against that API, against up or down. It says you need a player name. So let's go grab that player name right off the dashboard, Kate Libby, and throw that in, Kate.Libby. It's, we get back an answer, 90. Okay, so it's, this API is just giving win rate. It's not giving skew. It's nice and simple. So that means that we can, if we can person in the middle of this, we can make it so that we control what win rate the Kubernetes cluster is seeing and thus whether it'll cheat or not. So we've got our we've got our uh, coop control setup that we do, um, and uh, in this player DB in the Redis pod, and now we say, okay, in the default namespace, give me a list of all the things that I can do. We use auth can I, and we get back, um, hey, for services, you're allowed to create them and get them and and get them and list them. Um, well, that's cool. So let's. Let's use our uh, let's use our privileges to do that first. Let's take a look at the services that are there. There's a contractor service, and we're going to use the contractor service um, so that we can get tra so we can get the traffic that we're going to create. We're going to create our own service. We want to send it the same send it tra its traffic to the same place the contractor service goes, because the contractor's pod is the one is the one that we've got code execution in where we can affect how it responds to requests. So if we look at this contractor service, there's a selector and that's what, that's what controls where the traffic goes. It goes to any pods where app is set to contractors. So in our service, we just have to set the same selector. So we're gonna create our own service. We're, I'm uploading it. I've built it already and I'm gonna show you that service. Here we go. So the service is kind service. It's got a name, that name doesn't matter so much. What matters here is what's in the spec. So the external IPs, anything going to these IPs, and this is the IP address that that DNS name maps to, um, is going to instead be sent to pods in the cluster um, with apps set to contractors. Um, and it's gonna be only for things that we're going to port 80 on that external IP, um, and they'll instead go to port 8000 on those pods. So if we apply this, if we can create this service, we're able to person in the middle, anything going, anything from this namespace, going out to that external IP outside the cluster. It's not gonna go to the outside, it's gonna go instead to what we want it to go to. So now that we've got that set up, we need to go back over to the contractors pod and set up answers for any of the incoming requests we get. So we're gonna do a little quick little thing. We're gonna say, wait, if all the requests are gonna be against these users, this is kind of the simplest way to do it, um, against, you know, these URLs are gonna be 
slash upper down slash, you know, kate.libby or day.murphy. Well, let's just take these and we'll create a little loop. Um, and we're just going to create a directory. We create a directory called upper down. We create a file um, for each of these users in the directory. And if you look at the contents of one of these files, we'll look at the one for Dade Murphy, it just returns five. So not that complex an API, but now if you hit SKU level, SKU level goes and queries, um, the, SKU the SKU level program you're acting with here goes and queries that external IP, but it gets rerouted to us. So we're person in the middle of it. And now everybody shows up with a win rate of five um, which means they get a skew, a cheating of zero, no cheating, and uh, and that means we're that means we're kind of saving the day. So when we we when we reload this dashboard, we see five, we see zero, and things are good. We were victorious. Okay, some resources you might find helpful. The first link is Parades, the tool we used here. It's got a lot more features, and we'd love your help developing it. The CVE is the second link. The, that led us to the uh, person in the middle, external IP. The third link is the slides, which also contain an extra slide with a summary of the attack path. The fourth link is in Guardians Kubernetes page, where you can find tools like Parades and Bustacube and uh, videos and um, other resources. And then finally, the last link is a YouTube link for uh, a longer um Kubernetes introduction talk. It's got some good introduction to how Kubernetes works, and then it's got its own really cool attack path themed on Scott Pilgrim versus the world, a classic movie. So anyway, I hope to see you around KringleCon. I know I'll be playing the Holiday Hack Challenge, so hopefully we'll meet each other virtually. Um, thank you so much for your time.